All right. Good afternoon, everybody. It's 2 p.m. So we know that our class actually for the laboratory starts at 1, but we made adjustments today. We're starting officially at 2 p.m. And we have about two hours to listen to our guest lecture and then have quite some time no, for question and answer or sharing, no, sharing later on. Um, I hope that there would be also, well, other students who are still not here would be able to join us later on. But again, this is recorded so that whoever cannot access or cannot join us for the Zoom today, uh, they would still have this material and they would still benefit from what our guest lecture would share. So I am very grateful to, to our uh, guest lecturer for saying yes on a very short notice. Pero sabi ko, uh, even if it's short notice, uh, I know that she has so much to share, knowing that it's part of her work for several years now. <laughs> several years now. So this is the only PGR class uh, offered in CMU. And many students are saying that it should be actually, it should be offered for the College of Agriculture students. Uh, at least I hear that comments from other students who had taken this before. And, but unfortunately, this is still very limited to uh, PB majors, plant breeding majors for the senior students. But I remember several years back, there were some Agrin students who took this as an elective class. Yeah. So um, so technically speaking, Kath, uh, Kathy, we have, I sort of condensed uh, many, many PGR subjects into one just to introduce them about the relevance and importance of PGR conservation. But today we are so blessed that even if it's sort of still in holiday mode, um, she said yes to share with us uh, her story and her work and her activities, programs, and projects uh, <laughs> with, the national, with the National Gene Bank. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, if you can switch on briefly your camera so that uh, our guest speaker could see you. Because the other one your profile pics ang gaganda nyo, ha? Um, Okay, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, today we have our guest lecturer. I'll be briefly introducing her, but she can add more. Uh, she's actually from Jensan. So she speaks Tagalog, she speaks Filipino, but she definitely understands Bisaya. So later on, if you have, if you have questions later on or sharing, uh, you can still speak in the vernacular. So Miss Catherine Hazel Aguilar used to be a research assistant and then she became an instructor at MSU Jensan, okay, Marawi State University General Santos. She's actually a personal and a professional friend because we have a common friend and now we have a, we are a circle of friends. She then, um, well, she, well, she could add later on, but these are the facts that I am very sure. <laughs> um, she took her master's in plant genetic resources conservation at Utilas Banos. She graduated maybe two to three Two years ago, three years ago, she can correct me with that later on. Uh, but now she's one of the very um, commendable staff of the National Plant Genetics Resources Laboratory at the Institute of Plant Breeding of UPLB. So whenever you would visit uh, UPLB, try to drop by at IPB and especially at the NPGRL. Miss Kathy would always accommodate you as long as she's there. Okay. <laughs> All right, so our guest speaker, our guest lecturer today is Miss Catherine Hazel Aguilar. Uh, if you can switch on your button for a, a virtual applause, that would be nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Kathy, you may start. Thank you, Paul. So I'd like to share my screen first. Kita na po? Yes, Kathy. Okay. So, hello po. Good afternoon. Mayong hapon. First of all, I would like to thank Ma'am Joy for inviting me on behalf of the Gen Bank of the NPGRL. 
I consider this as a great opportunity for me to be able to share more about PGR conservation and management, what we do at the Gin Bank, and to hopefully inspire you to take part in conserving our um, valuable crop genetic resources. Although I know that Mam Joy has been doing an excellent job in promoting the conservation and utilization of PGR. So again, I'm Kathy Aguilar, currently a university researcher and a curator of the Vegetable Genetic Resources at NPGRL or the National Plant Genetic Resources Laboratory. So I graduated three years ago, so I took up MSPGR. Um, undergraduate ko was BS Biology actually, so I'm not an agriculturist, but um, I had this interest on PGR, so that's why I took up MS PGR for my master's. So the National Plant Genetic Resources Laboratory was established on November 12, 1976. So we're actually, we'll be celebrating our 45th anniversary on the 12th. And the NPGRL was established by the virtue of Presidential Decree 1046A. The NPGRL is one of the component units or divisions of the Institute of Plant Breeding at UPLP. So we are basically a university-based multi-crop gin bank. And we are mandated by law to conserve and promote the utilization of the country's plant genetic resources for food, agriculture, and environment. And to provide germplasm materials as sources of variability for crop improvement by IPB, the Institute of Plant Breeding, other research institutions, other breeders, researchers, and as well as for the use of students, farmers, and other stakeholders. And we also lead, coordinate, and monitor national effort in the collection, conservation, utilization, and exchange of PGR. Now we all know that plant genetic resources provide the biological underpinning for agriculture and food production and constitute the foundation upon which agriculture and world food security are based. So crop genetic diversity is a key resource in efforts to increase food production while limiting the impacts on the environment. So you can see here some of our collections at the Gin Bank. So you can see um, several varieties of Musa banana and other um, indigenous fruits. And we also have cereals, legumes, and many more. So according to FAO, there are more than 6,000 plant species that have been cultivated for food. However, only 200 make major contributions to food production globally, uh, regionally, or nationally. And fortunately, only nine account for 66% of total crop production. So that would be uh, sugarcane, maize, wheat, potatoes, soybeans, oil palm, sugar beet, and cassava. So the over-dependence on a handful of species, varieties, and breeds threaten the sustainability of our food system and, of course, can affect human and environmental health. So basically, that's one of the biggest reasons why we need to conserve plant genetic resources. So if you could uh, remember some crisis, such as the Irish famine that was triggered by potato blight in 1845 or the outbreak of the Panama banana disease in 1950s show that the over-reliance on a single crop species or could be one or few varieties thereof can pose serious risks to food security and economic stability and therefore would undermine the resilience of the food system. And there are several threats and challenges, especially today. We have agricultural modernization, climate change and variability, of course, the environmental degradation, habitat fragmentation, urbanization due to population pressure, 
And then we have so many economic and social political changes. And then of course, acculturation and cultural changes. All of this pose threats and all of these are threats and challenges that we are currently facing. And one of the major problems that we have is the increase in the world population. So with a population that will approach almost 10 billion by 2050, and with more climate stress and higher climate variability on the horizon, the goal of building more resilient food systems is more important today than ever before. In the Philippines alone, according to the OSCF NRI, 64.1% of Filipino households were food insecure in 2020. So this photo was actually taken in Serangani province. So akala nyo, chubby chicks, ano? Pero actually, if you would look at their limbs, ang papayat nila. So these are actually um, indications of protein deficiency. So, Duda namin, duda lang, hindi naman doktor, meron silang protein deficiency because they rely on root crops. They don't have enough protein sources. Even if um, legumes and other um, protein-rich crops, wala masyado sa area nila. So, this um, kids, madalas ang kanilang kinakain, cassava and other root crops. So, kaya duda namin, very high ang incidences ng protein deficiency, especially in the upland areas in Serengeti province. So, here are some facts regarding malnutrition in the Philippines. So, according to FNRI, one in every three children under five years old is stunted, and there is underweight prevalence of 19.2%. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, so, kung merong mga undernourished, meron naman tayong mga overweight. So, 36% of Filipino adults are overweight. And so, the conservation and use of crop genetic diversity is definitely a key component of sustainable solutions to hunger and malnutrition. And the plant genetic resources that we conserve in gin banks today will help attain these goals not only for the present generation but of course for the future generations we have sustainable agriculture food and nutrition security climate change adaptation and agroecological and socio-economic resilience so if we are food and nutrition secured we have sustainable agriculture, so of course we can be um, resilient. Kahit ano pa man ang changes when it comes to our uh, to the state of our agroecological system and socioeconomic um, status, we can be resilient enough if we are um, secured. And plant genetic resources can help us attain those goals. Now, there are several initiatives for the conservation and sustainable use of PGR. So, these initiatives on conservation and sustainable use of PGRs is vital or, um, are vital for the world's collective food security. So, take note that we are interdependent. So, we also depend on other countries and vice versa. So, these uh, conservation initiatives will always start at home so we have home seed banks so you can keep your seeds replant uh, in your home gardens so by continuous cultivation and utilization we can always conserve our pgrs and then we have community gin banks so in the philippines there are several community gin banks especially in the areas where um, indigenous people live uh, in other countries, there are also many community gin banks like in India and Africa. And then we have national gin banks like NPGRL and of course the international gin banks. So all over the world, there are approximately 1,750 gin banks. 
Homestead Bank. As you can see here, um, this was taken in Serangani Province as well. So, matagal kasi ako nag-work sa Serangani Province, sa Upland. So, dito yung farmer, you could see na uh, naglalabas siya ng seeds from the bamboo. So, tawag nila dito teral. So, this was in a Blaan community. So, they store their seeds using bamboo, that, um, which they call as teral. And they can store um, their seeds for up to two years. So they can, you know, kung may, um, for the next planting season, meron na silang seeds na pang tanim. So they, they are um, sufficient. Then we have community gen banks. So here uh, you could see on the left side, this was taken in uh, Ifugao. So I um, carried out my thesis, MS thesis, Ifugao. Like one year ako pabalik balik sa Ifugao. So this was their community gin bank. Dito nila tinatago ang kanilang mga seeds. Yeah, most are um, rice and other vegetables as well. And then on the right side, this was in Sarangani province. So they also have their um, community gin bank. So this is run and managed by the community. Then of course, the national gin bank. So in the Philippines, we actually have several, depending on the species or the crop that they are conserving. We have fill rice for rice and other cereal crops. I think they have adlai. And then we have, uh, on the middle, PCA, uh, Philippine Coconut Authority for coconut. And then Filfida for fiber crops like abaca, which is indigenous to the Philippines, endemic to the Philippines. And then we have here uh, BPI. They have uh, several satellite um, gin banks in their different uh, regional centers. And of course, NPGRL. So at NPGRL, we have approximately 20,273 germplasm accessions belonging to 390 species. Now take note that this is the physical inventory. So I would like to give emphasis on the physical inventory because we are not sure if all of these accessions are viable. Um, later on, I will share kung bakit hindi kami sigurado kung buhay pa tong lahat ng mga accessions na to. So mostly are legumes and vegetables. And then we also have um, feed and industrial crops, cereals, mostly maize. Then small fruits, tree fruits, spam, nuts, and ornamentals such as orchids and gumamela. So as you can see, multi-crop kami. Hindi iisa lang o... Oh. So there are um, approximately 390 species at the gin bank. So what you can see here are the core gin bank operations. So these are the activities that we are carrying out at the gin bank to um, conserve, manage, and sustainably use our crop genetic resources. So we will um, tackle briefly each uh, operation. Now take note that our country is one of the world's recognized megadiverse countries and biodiversity hotspots. So the natural vegetation of the Philippines is highly diverse. And in fact, it supports one of the world's richest floral communities. So this was taken in uh, Holongan in Ifugao, uh, Kiangan, Ifugao province. So, dito ako nagtagal ng halos isang taon nung nagkakandakt ako ng thesis. So, makikita nyo, ang alam nyo dito ay rice, rice terraces na. But actually, they are planting a lot of crops aside from rice. They have vegetables, legumes, fruit crops. And unlike other um, traditional agroecosystem, you would see the forest sa taas ng kanilang terraces. Now, this forest, which they call as Muyong, is very important for the Ifugaos. 
Kasi aside from source nila ng tubig, napakadami din nilang um, fruits, other crops as well, dito sa mulyong na to, that support them. And so, dahil masyadong rich ang Philippines when it comes to um, genetic resources, we need to carry out germplasm acquisition every now and then. Now, germplasm acquisition, this is the assemblage of germplasm in the gene bank, and it is generally categorized into two. We have direct or field collecting. So, pupunta kami sa field, magko-collect. But this is a very um, costly uh, activity. So, you need to travel, you may need all documents, all permits to carry out uh, collecting of germplasm. But then we can also have indirect acquisition through donation or exchange. So farmers can or breeders can directly donate, or we can also um, do an exchange with other gin banks. So we have partnerships with other gin banks like international gin banks as well. So through those activities, we um, acquire our germplasm, which we uh, store at the gin bank. So field collecting is conducted in the natural wild habitats as well as backyard gardens. But prior to collecting, we need to um, acquire permits. So first, we need to have credit was permit from DNR. We need to coordinate with the LGUs and in the indigenous communities, hindi pa de basa basa ng makapasok. We need to uh, obtain what we call as the FPIC, um, prior informed consent, galing sa indigenous communities. Now, that would take more or less one to two years bago maka-acquire ng permit na yun. So, as much as possible, iniiwasan namin yung indigenous communities. Now, this is one of the limitations Kasi nga, ang hirap, ang hirap makapasok dito sa mga indigenous communities. And yet, sila yung madalas na nagtatago ng napakadaming varieties of different crops. So, if if you would um, realize, ito yung dapat sanang kinukunan namin, kinokolektahan ng germplasm, pero ito yung hirap kaming... So, I believe other um, gin banks as well have this the same problem. Now at the NPGRL, we um, have the seed gin bank, the field gin bank, and the in vitro laboratory. So we maintain accession through seed, field, and in vitro. So here you would see our um, seed storage facility. So we have upright freezers. So at the yung aming um, base collection. So it's where we keep um, our base collection of um, Philippine seed crops like legumes, vegetables, and cereals. So those crops with orthodox seeds. So those seeds that can withstand very low temperature and low moisture content. Then we also have this walk-in cold storage. By the way, the freezers, uh, negative 18 degrees Celsius and temperature. So that's for long-term storage. And then our active collection, active collection are the ones that we distribute, the ones that we use for research. So we keep them in um, a walk-in cold storage, 18 degrees Celsius. So, so we have four walk-in cold um, storage um, what we call it as Conviron. So it's actually a brand name. Pero Conviron yung tawag namin. Para siyang, um, so ito, yung isang square na yan. Uh, that's one walk-in cold storage. And we have four. So for cereals, legumes, vegetables, and medicinal plants. So we have here our, um, this is the drying room. So where we place our um, seeds prior to packing and storing at um, the seed uh, storage um, room or refrigerator. So 
we maintain the 5 to 7 percent moisture content depending on crop. So, may mga crops na hindi nila kayang uh, bumaba ng 5 percent moisture content like uh, oily seeds such as um, legumes. So, usually, mas mataas ang kanilang moisture content. But for cereals and vegetables, kaya namin pababain ang moisture content ng up to 5%. So, this is a very um, critical um, factor when it comes to storing seeds. So, if um, Mom Joy has already discussed the um, thumb rules by Harrington, so, for every decrease of 1% seed moisture content, the life of the seed doubles. So, this rule is applicable when moisture content is between 5 and 14%. Now, for every decrease naman of 5 degrees Celsius or 10 degrees Fahrenheit in storage temperature, the life of the seed doubles. So, pag kinumbayan yung very low moisture content and low temperature, Hahaba ng hahaba yung life ng seeds. So, the good seed storage is achieved when the percent of relative humidity in storage environment and the storage temperature uh, add up. And so, prior to um, packing, kailangan namin siyang pababain yung moisture content dito sa aming drying room. So, it's a controlled environment. 15 degrees Celsius and 15% relative humidity. Now, may time na nasira yung aming drying room. So, ang ginagawa namin, pag nasira yung drying room namin, gumagamit kami ng desiccant. So, we use silica gel. So, 1 is to 1. So, kung 1 kilogram of seeds, 1 kilogram of silica gel. So, we use indicating and non-indicating silica gel. So, if you're familiar with um, yung uh, usually, nasa sapatas sa mga silica gel. So, puti yun kung nabubuksan niyo yung packet. So, we use indicating, so the blue silica gel, nagtuturn siya into pale blue to pink pag naabsorb niya na yung moisture from the seeds. So, kailangan maglagay kami ng indicating na silica gel para makita namin na naabsorb niya na yung moisture from the seeds. But this would take a very long process kasi matagal. Matagal bago bumaba ng up to 5% yung moisture content ng seeds. So, ang ginagawa namin, nililuto namin pa ulit-ulit ang silica gel hanggang sa umabot na ng 5% yung moisture content ng mga puto kapag wala kaming um, trying room. Now, we have field gen bank. So, for crops na may recalcitrant seeds or intermediate seeds, we uh, have the field gen bank. So, it's an exito conservation of tropical fruit and nut species. So, kita niya dito ang manggahan ng NPGRL. And then also for root crops. So, nasa field gen bank din sila. So, cassava, taro, um, sweet potato, and as well as medicinal plants. So, may mga medicinal plants na Pwede nam itago yung buto, but most of the medicinal plants are um, vegetatively propagated, so we maintain them uh, in the field gen bank. And then we have some ornamental plants. We have here um, orchids, some indigenous orchids. And then for medium-term conservation of asexually propagated crops, we also maintain them in vitro, so in the lab, uh, tissue culture. So the NPGRL maintains the largest in vitro collection of asexually propagated crop species, including banana, sugarcane, yam, taro, sweet potato, and cassava in vitro. So we all know there are a lot of risks sa field gen bank, like lalo lalo na dito sa Laguna, madalas ang typhoon and other calamities. So, kailangan meron kaming backup. So, kaya nagme-maintain kami ng mga nasa field, mine-maintain din namin sila in vitro. But not all, kasi uh, mahirap din yung protocol sa ibang crops. So, we only have um, protocols for 
musa and then for root crops and we are also starting with medicinal plants and other vegetables such as garlic so yung mga hirap kaming i-maintain sa field yun yung pinapasok namin sa lab as um, tissue culture so we are still trying to um, do cryopreservation but hindi siya practical in our case because it's too expensive and um, we cannot continue our cryopreservation activities. So, hanggang digital culture lang na ang NPGRL. And then, we carry out germplasm regeneration. So, we need to produce new seed samples or plant materials that, as much as possible, have maximum quality. So, when we say maximum quality, their germination must be 85% um, um, up. So they must be, um, they must have 85% or better um, viability. Then we also need to obtain um, optimum quantity. So a minimum of 5,000 seeds per crop, depending on species pa rin. And of course, they must be, um, they must have same genetic composition as the original. So as you can see here, nag-regenerate kami ng legumes, vegetables, pag mababang mababa na yung viability and paubos na rin yung aming seeds. However, limitation kasi dito, another expensive activity is the gen bank. And because we don't have enough financial resources, hindi naman nare-regenerate lahat. So, ito yung sinasabi ko kaninang hindi kami sigurado if um, the 28,000 accession sa Gen Bank, lahat sila ay buhay pa. Kasi ang iba, um, matagal nang naitago sa Gen Bank, like 1980s, early 1990s, and hindi sila na-regenerate. So we are not sure if kaya pa namin silang buhayin lahat. So paunti-unti kasi yung aming regeneration. So those are some of the limitations sa Gen Bank. And then we have, um, we carry out germplasm characterization. So as you can see here, variation observed in lift rates of selected squash accessions. And then we also have here, some, you can see variations of fruits. So characterization is the systematic recording of genetically controlled traits that are highly heritable and do not vary with um, environmental conditions. So, pag nag-regenerate kami, nagka-characterize na rin kami. So, two-in-one yung activity. So, germplasm characterization is very important in the gene bank because, of course, we need to know the traits. We need to know um, the accessions, kung ano yung, kung ano sila, kung ano yung characters na meron sila. And for, also, for uh, us to also know the diversity of our collection. So the information gleaned from germplasm characterization and evaluation, such as genetic diversity, will allow us to optimize exito management operations. So, baka madami kami collections na duplicate pala, or may gaps pala kami sa collection. So kailangan namin always na mag-characterize. So through characterization, we will be able to identify useful traits and genotypes and enhance the value of the collection. So this will facilitate the effective and efficient utilization of our um, PGR. So pag alam namin kung anong characters meron sila and mapapaalam namin sa breeders, so they can... Um, use this useful traits and genotypes in their crop improvement programs. So there are several uh, methodologies when um, characterizing plant genetic resources. We have morphological or phenotypic um, characterization, cytological, biochemical, and molecular. But unfortunately, at the NPGRL, Yan lang yung kaya namin gawin at the moment. So, we only carry out morphological characterization. Although, um, we collaborate with other laboratories na kayang mag-carry out ng molecular characterization, so DNA fingerprinting, because we all know that um, maraming limitations ang morphological characterization. 
It's because we are only looking at the phenotypic characters that are you know, variable, depende sa environment as well. May maraming effects. May genotype times E na effect. And also, um, madaming kailangang um, i-consider na factors. It, it doesn't mean that na sila ay morphologically different, sila ay diverse na. So we need to carry out molecular characterization to make sure that our collection is in fact diverse. But for now, ito muna yung aming ginagawang madalas, phenotypic or morphological characterization. So as you can see, um, morphological characterization of tomatoes. And to be able to do that, we need to get to know that crop from seed to seed. This is very challenging, especially if you are you know, in charge of so many crops, like Ako, vegetables. Ang daming vegetables. So, kailangan kong kilalanin yung crop from seed to seed. Lahat sila isa-isa. So, lahat ng selenaceous, lahat ng cooker bits, all of the vegetable crops, kailangan ko silang kilalanin from seed to seed for me to be able to characterize them efficiently. So, we need to familiarize the crop descriptor list. So, we have this descriptor list from biodiversity as well as um Yipov. So, ito yung ginagamit namin pag nagka-characterize ng mga um, crops. Unfortunately, there are other crops, especially our neglected and underutilized species, madalas wala silang descriptor lists. So, for those crops na walang descriptor lists, we need to make a crop descriptor list for them. So, another challenge para dun sa mga neglected and underutilized crop species. So, some more pictures. So, these are some of our accessions, tomato accessions. So, eggplant, as you can see, very um, variable. Kanilang fruits. So, there is high variation pagdating sa fruit traits ng ating uh, collection ng eggplant. And then, we also have pepper and um, in partnership with um, the analytical services laboratory at IPB we also carry out nutraceutical analysis of our PGR so for us to know the nutraceutical compounds ito very important siya, especially if um, ang program natin geared towards um, addressing malnutrition um, nutrient um, deficiencies so, kailangan natin alamin what are the important um, nutraceutical compounds that um, our genetic resources have. So, pag meron tayong varieties na mataas ang sample vitamin C and other um, vitamins and minerals, we can use them in um, our breeding programs. Then, also, in collaboration with other laboratories like Plant Path Lab, I believe you're familiar with the Plant Path Lab of the IPB and Entomology, Plant Fisho Laboratories, we carry out the germplasm, abio uh, germplasm evaluation, abiotic and um, biotic stresses. Naman. And all of the data that we have at the GenBank, we store them we maintain them at our um, information management system which we call as civil grace unfortunately it's not yet online but hopefully soon magiging online na siya and you can access the data so the passport data the characterization and evaluation data so ma access ni sila lahat through field grace so this is very important because you cannot you know, utilize the um, varieties, the PGR, if you don't have the data. If hindi naka-organize ang data mo, so paano mo sila magagamit? So the documentation system of the GenBank is a very important for you to be able to utilize this plant genetic resources. Kasi para ka lang museum na nagtatago ng buto o ng mga halaman pag wala kang data. So ba parang wala siyang, wala siyang use kumbaga. So, kailangan ng efficient documentation system for you to be able to utilize these plant genetic resources. 
And then, of course, one of our mandates as well is to distribute our um, germplasm. So, around 3,000 accessions or more per year ang nade-distribute namin. So, our clientele mostly are plant breeders from IPB and other SUCs. And then, we also distribute seeds to private institutions and seed companies. And of course, local farmers and other researchers and students. So students can request for seeds, but we can only give uh, 100 seeds per accession. And for um, asexually propagated crops, one to three um, plantlets lang yung kaya naming ibigay. Because we are not, um, we are not selling the seeds or the accessions free po yung pag-access ng ating mga um, buto but um, limited lang yung quantity na pwede namin ibigay and then we also need to duplicate our um, accessions our collection so as you can see dito <laughs> ito yung delubio <laughs> sa um, gin bank several years ago so this was um, after Typhoon Milenio. So, binaha ang gin bank. Nagsiangatan lahat ng stante, ng conviron. Nabasa ang karamihan ng mga seeds. Now, we know naman pag nabasa ang seeds, um, delikada na hin it's either mag-germinate na silang tuluyan lahat or hindi na sila mag- um, Mataas na yung moisture content nila at hindi namin napababa ulit. So, possible na naapektuhan yung viability nila. So, hindi pa kami tapos hanggang ngayon. So, wala pa ako nito sa gin bank when this happened. So, hindi pa namin natapos ng check lahat. Because sobrang dami ba naman ang aming collection. Hindi pa namin natapos ng check kung um, viable pa lahat ng seeds na naapektuhan um, during the typhoon millennium. And then, also nasunog yung building ng G-Bank. So that's why limited kami to phenotypic uh, characterization. Kasi ang equip, lahat ng equipment ng G-Bank for cytological and molecular characterization ay nasunog. So, kaya ngayon, uh, until now, um, para kaming... Uh, Andiyan pa rin naman, andiyan pa rin naman ang seed storage facility, hindi siya naapektuhan, but the other laboratories, yun yung nasunog, and the offices. So, um, ika para kaming squatter na palipat-lipat ng offices, but hopefully, magkakaroon kami ng bagong building soon, I don't know when, but hopefully soon. So, what we are currently doing at the moment, so... Personally, kasi ang um, hawa ko ay vegetables, at yung ginagawa ko ngayon. So, continuous viability testing ng lahat. So, ang hawa ko ay more than 10,000 accessions. So, every year, nag-viability um, test ako ng more than 1,000 accessions of different crops. So, pag natapos ko na lahat, Vi um, iba viability test ko na naman yung mga nauna ko. So, it's a continuous process. Hindi siya natatapos. And maraming problematic seeds. So, that's why I'm carrying out seed priming experiments as well to enhance their seed germination. And then, we regenerate kung ano yung nag-germinate. Diretso namin silang nire-regenerate sa field. And so, because we cannot carry out all those activities, we are um, collaborating with uh, other SECs and other um, private companies like East West Seed. So right now, we have a ongoing collaboration with them. And so, nagre-regenerate sa kanilang field. So hindi sa amin, sa kanila, pero... Um, ang seeds galing sa gin bank and then ibabalik nila sa gin bank kung ano man yung na harvest na seeds na regenerate na mga buto. So in that way hindi na kami gagatos sa regeneration ng mga um, varieties. And 
also this are the current activities that we are carrying out in partnership with the breeding teams sa IPB. So we are trying to develop abiotic stress tolerant varieties of tomato and pepper and um, variety development for increased yield in other vegetable crops such as cucurbits. Then and also development of improved okra varieties and so on. So ang ginagamit na lang sa plasm ay etong mga varieties o accessions na tinatago namin sa Ginback. So I would like to share this recently concluded um, project, the documentation of indigenous vegetables in the Philippines. So we conducted this project um, within two years from 2018 to 2020, although next time kami, um early 2021. So we went to 20 provinces across the Philippines to document all the indigenous vegetables that we have. Now, these indigenous vegetables, ay marami sa kanila, unti-unti nang nawawala. So because of habitat destruction, urbanization, so we need to document and to collect them as soon as possible for us to be able to um, still conserve this um, very valuable indigenous plant genetic resources. So, kaya meron kaming tagline, rediscover the Philippines one vegetable at a time. Because even uh, ako as a curator, hindi ko kilala pa lahat. So, during this project, um, nade-rediscover ko nga ang Philippines. Because iba-iba, per region, iba-iba ang, kumbaga, ang kanilang um, mga specialty na indigenous vegetables. So, in this project, um, ako yung in charge sa paggawa ng database, online database. So, this will go online soon. And dito nyo makikita lahat ng mga na-document namin ng indigenous vegetables in the 20 provinces. So, 20 provinces, then in each province, two municipalities, four barangays. So, a total of 40 municipalities across the Philippines. So, we... Uh, we're able to uh, document more than 200 species of indigenous vegetables across the country. And in this database, you would um, be able to access information regarding those vegetables. So botanical information, um, how they were able to cultivate them, how they conserve them, and even recipes. So the um we need to utilize these vegetables in able um, for us to be able to conserve them as well. So hindi lang kailang hindi lang natin itatago. Kailangan din natin utilize. So naglagay kami dito ng mga recipes na document din namin sa mga provinces, sa mga napuntahan naming sites. So may mga unique na mga vegetable recipes na makikita niyo dito. So, kung paano sila gamitin. Kasi marami dito sa mga gulay considered as weed. So, some even, parang feeling ko, nung ginagawa naman yung project na to, parang feeling ko makain ako lagi ng damo. Kasi usually, mga nakikita ko lang sa um, rice fields and even sa uh, gilid ng daan, hindi mo aakalaing vegetables pala. Kinoconsider sila na vegetables ng um, iba't ibang provinces. So we also have a Facebook page if you want to um, see the activities that we did during um, the uh, conduct of this project. So you can visit Angulay Bao. And then we also have um, pamphlets. So, pwede niyo po ma-download din yung pamphlets. We have 20 pamphlets featuring different vegetables per pamphlet. And we'll be producing a book. Hindi ko alam kung kailan na matatapos, but hopefully soon. And you can also access that through Facebook and through the database later on. 
Now, these are the challenges. At ano yung mga problema namin sa Zen Bank. Why we cannot um, carry out all the activities. Insufficient institutional support. Now, I have discussed the different core operations that we carry out at the Zen Bank. But um, would you believe that our um, funding for one year is 100,000? With um, 28 accessions, with 28,000 accessions na kailangan namin i-maintain sa seed storage, sa field, in vitro, 100,000 lang yung aming budget, excluding salaries, of course. So, it's not enough to cover everything sa gin bank. So, kaya laging um, staggered, laging paunti-unti yung activities na ginagawa namin. But, um, we need also to, you know, propose... Um, to external um, for external funding for us to carry out um, the other activities, especially um, collecting, regeneration, and characterization. So those are expensive, costly activities. Then we have inadequate and deteriorating, deteriorating facilities. So due to the fire, nawala karamihan ng mga equipment, and so we need to you know, build the gen bank again for us to um, operate efficiently. So we have huge volumes of unregenerated germplasm collections. And then, of course, vulnerabilities to pest infestation, calamities, and land use change. So, marami sa areas namin sa field ang... Um, <laughs> kailangan na namin silang ilipat ulit kasi gagamitin na yung area na yun. So, yun yung problema sa field gen bank. Kailangan yung maghanap ng area na dapat permanent na siya and hindi siya um, vulnerable to uh, land use change. Kasi, like, mga trees, di ba? Hindi niya sila basta-basta may ilipat. So, kailangan yung field gen bank nyo dapat permanent na dapat sila. Then we have risk management and security. Madalas yung aming mga uh, example, mangga, saging. Bago pa namin makolekta yung bunga na nakaw na. <laughs> mga ganong problems. Then difficulty in collating fragmented data. So because we depend on external funding, usually yung aming data ay fragmented. So we need to... Um, to analyze all this data, so therefore we need to collect um, all the fragmented data that we have. But unfortunately, um, usually pag umaalis na yung researcher o nagre-retire, bit-bit din nila yung data. So napakahirap. Um, personally, nung pumasa ko ng gene bank, this was one of the biggest um, challenge for me to be able to um, understand the collection kailangan ko makita yung mga previous data but unfortunately hindi na sila available meron din mga nasunog na mga data sheets so kailangan ulitin ulit yung um, data gathering and then the difficulty in disseminating information and promoting PGR conservation and management and the dearth of innovative ideas for fund um, generation. So actually, napaka-challenging ng pag-disseminate ng information when it comes to PGR conservation and management. Wala kasi siyang, um, hindi siya ganun ka-attractive na field, ika nga. Kasi, um, hindi mo kaagad nakikita yung result. So it will take years, di ba, bago mo makita na na-utilize talaga yung mga accessions na tinatago sa gin bank. So when it comes to promotion of PGR, nahihirapan kami. So um, we are trying to connect with um, other government agencies that can support us. Pero hin hirap silang makita and hirap din kami i-communicate kung, um, kung ano yung mga um, challenges as well as kung ano yung benefits ng PGR conservation and management. So that's one big challenge for us. So way forward, so we, despite the challenges, meron kaming mga steps na ginagawa, of course. So 
we are continuously um, polishing our quality management system. Pero kahit naman um, mabawasan yung mga accessions na meron kami, at least we can make sure that all of those accessions are alive. And then prioritization of viability testing and regeneration of seed crops, especially those that um, were collected uh, during the 1980s, 1990s, because I am sure na wala na sila sa field because of the influx of modern varieties and um, as well as habitat destruction. Malamang, marami sa mga nakolekta noong 1980s, 1990s, hindi na sila uh, makikita ngayon sa field. So usually, mga um, varieties na from seed companies ang nakatanim. And then, we need to strengthen the linkage with plant breeders and international institutions. So dapat hindi lang nakatago yung mga varieties na yun, yung mga accessions. Kailangan nila ma-utilize, kailangan nila magamit. So, in order to do that, we need to strengthen our linkage with um, other researchers and plant breeders. And then, one important thing, we need to promote PGR. We need to um, really do an, uh, we need to um, do an extra mile when it comes to um, promoting PGR conservation and management. So, one way na ginagawa ko ngayon i'm managing the facebook page of the npgrl so baby steps when it comes to promoting um, pgr conservation and management and of course to develop common interests between pgr managers and policy makers so dapat lahat ng ginagawa natin maintindihan ng mga policy makers because whether we like it or not sa kanila nang gagaling ang pera ang funding that we need in order to you know survive in order for the gen bank to survive so we need to be able to communicate um, PGR conservation and management to the policy makers so kailangan nila maintindihan kung ano ba talaga ang importance and on significance ng conservation ng plant genetic resources. So, I would like to share this um, quote. It's actually my favorite quote since second year college. So, in the end, we will conserve only what we love. We will love only what we understand and we will understand only what we are taught. So, kailangan natin nandihan kung ano yung conservation for us to be able to, you know, to be able to love our plant genetic resources. And if we love and we care for our plant genetic resources, we will be able to conserve them. So, I guess that would be um, the end of my presentation. Thank you, Kathy. If we can give Kathy a virtual clap and appreciation. Wow. Um, um, this is very um, clear and comprehensive. Although, alam ko, ang dami mo pang pwedeng i-share. But <laughs> your, <laughs> your previous experience as an instructor is really showing, showing well. And I was thinking while you were doing the presentation, is Kathy being invited to be an affiliate professor sa CAPS? I was just wondering <laughs> about that. But anyway, maybe they didn't know about your teaching background. But one way to indeed, uh, you know, conserve, uh, no, uh, promote awareness. Kasi ako meron akong isang principle, increase the aware, the PGR conservation circle. Yun ang ano ko, isa sa mga advocacies. So, increasing the conservation circle. Kukonti tayong involved sa PGR, officially with the PGR. So, when if you are handling a class, so this class is actually a class of only 22 students, 21 students. So, konti lang sila. So, I saw the number went up to 19. So, that's the most that who could attend today. Uh, yung iba na wala na. So, I understand that. But if you have a class of 50, uh, two classes of 50 students, and then you can, you know... Um, translate and transcend your advocacy and your love for PGR, then that would be at least, you know, you know, multiplier effect. We don't physically contribute to, to the population of the country, but we can sort of contribute. <laughs> 
actually to the <laughs> to other things, many other things. Sorry. Okay, thank you, Hath. Uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, presentation today. And uh, now we have uh, quite some time for, for sharing question, clarification, etc. And I already see uh, Geraldine's hand raised. Geraldine, uh, do you have a question, Geraldine? Naka raise imong imong hand. Your 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 online hand. Sorry. Uh, I will allow the students to to share first or query. Kasi ang dami ko ring ang dami kong questions early. But yes. but. but Mami ni po uh, to comprehensive exam ha. <laughs> no, no. And even if I give you a comprehensive exam, I'm sure you will pass with flying colors. <laughs> Times two than the number of colors ng rainbow. Sige, um, but <laughs> sorry. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as sa inyong mga pangutan, namay ko ay, ah, no? Um, at least uh, nakita ninyo uh, ang what Kathy is doing no, for the gene bank, what they are doing for the gene bank, and maybe in the future where you could come in, especially when she was saying, when she was sharing with us, you know, the challenges, because challenges provide opportunities and then she's providing, you know, some some of their uh, concerns for future direction. So, wala, wala takabalo, diba? You could be involved with PGR, etc. So, AJ, you have a question or something? Good afternoon, Doc Joy. Good afternoon, Ma'am Hazel. Um, very nice and clear presentation. And sa kaklaro sa presentation, I was being bothered with the challenges talaga, especially when the funding. Because at the, the first part of the presentation, I was uh, already writing my questions, at least four questions. And the first one is, uh, my, my concern is, uh, I want to to have a clarification if the NPGRL is on the process of upgrading the conservation facilities, but uh, but when the latter part of the presentation, yeah, I guess it's really not in the it's really not in the press because uh, upgrading the conservation facilities, such as the integration of AI in our active and base collection sites, specifically in monitoring our measure content viability, etc. So, uh, natubag pagyud ang ako ang pangutanan sa last part na, I guess, yeah, mm -hmm. kaninga part, marag wala pagyud ni kay ga, ga limited raman yun po ta sa phenotypic and morphological na 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 characterization. So, kanina lang, uh, question number three is, is NPGRL considering partnering to NCIP to resolve the limitations on accessing our tribal or indigenous ancestral domains for collection? Actually, we tried, but unfortunately, we still need to um, adhere to the law, to the rules. So, mm -hmm. kailangan pa rin namin na magkumuha ng permit. So, mm -hmm. in, in, hindi, humbaga, um, hindi, wala kaming libre ang pass. Mm -hmm. Being the National Gen Bank, hindi pa rin kami pwedeng maka-access basta-basta. Although, mm -hmm. there are instances na um, nakakapaso kami, but we know that um, legally, we need to acquire the permit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um. Thank you, AJ. Do you have a, an uh, an another question or ubus um or nasagot na yung iba na nasa listahan mo? Nasagot na yung sa uh, ibang questions ko. But the, this is the last one. The, the last question. Uh, maybe can help the students like me in the future. Uh, sa MS or PhD, something like that. Uh, what is the ethic protocol for accessing seeds from NPGRL? Like, uh, what, as a student, ah, okay. how can we 
access. Uh, yeah, something like that. You just need to uh, write a letter addressed to our division head. And then if, um, example, vegetable. So I will personally um, send you the request form and uh, the material transfer agreement um, for non-Annex 1 crops and uh, a standard material transfer agreement for the Annex 1 crops. And then Ganun lang kadali. We can um, already uh, send the seeds, but um, a maximum of 100 seeds per accession. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank, Thank you, you AJ. Thank you, Thank you Kathy. Uh, yung Annex 1 crops na sinasabi ni Kathy, there's a list kasi nandun sa ITP GRFA. Hindi pa kami dubating dyan sa ITP GRFA, oh, but Giovanni's <laughs> here about but Giovanni is aware about the ITB GRFA because MS student siya. Okay. We discussed that in the class. So, um, okay. Nagpapakita si Giovanni. I'm not sure if he has a question. I will just reserve my comments later. Van, nakipangotana? Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am Jay. Good afternoon, ma'am Hayes. Uh, congratulations for that uh, very wonderful presentation. Uh, I know, ma'am, sa ka, ka understand po, kagbisaya gamay, ma'am, no? I know, ma'am. Bisayang ko, bisayang ko kayo. I'm Giovanni Day, ma'am. Then, I am uh, working in the Department of Agriculture. Then, partner, uh, I believe, ma'am, we're partners for the Sigurd Project. Uh, corn Gym Plasm Collection for corn, native corn. So, uh, uh, before that, ma'am, ang nalakoy question, gusto mo make mga kanang ba, ma'am? Maklaro gamay about sa katita inyo hang uh, partnership with the S to S. So ang kwa natin yam mam uh, sila ang mag characterize uh, unsa agreement niya na mam they are free to use those plant genetic mm. resources for improvement oh. or possibly development of varieties. Uh, does no, it follow the kwa nam the as ah, S to S pa? Uh, no, they are still not free to use the seeds example the harvest from the um pag, pagkatapos nilang ma-regenerate hindi pa rin sila basta basta pwedeng makakuha so they still need to request and sign all the documents prior to accessing even if sa kanila nakatanim pero hin nga ang um, personally ang <laughs> view ko kasi um how can we make sure kasi nasa yeah. kanila sa kanila nakatanim um <laughs> Pero Chancellor kasi namin ang pumirma sa MOA. <laughs> Kaya um, yun yung um, trust na lang. But you cannot really make sure if um, kahit isang uh, bunga lang, diba? marami na yung <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, ma'am. Go ahead. ahead. Uh, yeah, the, the, yeah. Uh, he will come back later. But exactly, Kathy. Uh, uh, that's a very tempting. Mm. Uh, integrity is always relative. You know, integrity is relative. Uh, even for me, means I'm using bond paper, diba, sa office for a personal <laughs> use. Ano na lang yung, 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 yung yeah. seeds. Uh, okay. So Giovanni is uh, Giovanni is back. I'm sure na pa she follow up questions. So Giovanni go. Sala Salamat is a internet connection. <laughs> Sorry ma'am for the hit. Yeah. Uh why not po ma'am na uh, uh they been to a contract na lang po for a benefit sharing para para din po maka-raise ng funds yung NPGRL. Because uh we all know po we, even kami po sa Department of Agriculture eh gamay rin po namong funds uh, especially for research kahirapan niya po ng pangitag pondo. Mm -hmm. Then another concern po Ay, ira pa internet dito, Kasi kanina putol-putol din ako. <laughs> Sige, let's give Ali will be back. Uh Sige, we'll have Giovanni later on, but I think I think Michael. Ay, teka. Ma uh, hey. Van, okay na ba ibon ko an Van? Van, balikan na lang kana mo ni Van ha. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Mag mag okay. mag out ako ma'am. Magbalik na lang ko. Okay, okay sige. Let's have Michael. Good afternoon, ma'am Kathleen. Good afternoon, ma'am Joy. So, 
Ah, uh, kung question ma'am is what if you have discovered a duplicate in your collection? So how would you treat this one? Mm. So, what actions are I okay, ma'am? We need to discard. If there are duplicates, we need to discard this collection. Kasi kailangan namin, kumbaga, as much as possible, maximum diversity, pero i- kailangan namin i-minimize yung cost. So as much as we want to store, like, um, more than 10 kilograms of seeds, hindi pwede. Because we are limited in terms of the facilities, the space, as well as pagmamanage ng um, mga seeds. So in order for us to efficiently manage them, we need to discard any duplicate accessions. Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much. So in behalf of the class, ma'am, um, we would like to extend our warmest um, but Jan Michael, na baya na dear. I will call you. Okay, ma. Tanda le, hindi pa tayo tapos. <laughs> Excited. <laughs> Thank you, Jan. Ah, napay po. <laughs> Napat ay question, Jan. Napat ay sa Q and A. Kung part pa sa program, ah, uh, you will do the closing remarks. Thank you, Jan Michael. Um. Before si Angelica, kasi I think the fact that they're opening their camp, they have questions. Um, okay, I will reserve na lang my time later on. Sige, Angelica, if you have questions or anything to share. Yes, Paul. Well, good morning, Paul. Well, good morning, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am Hazel. Good afternoon, po. Good afternoon, po. Um, I have a few questions. So, pero first is, curious lang po ako, what are the things or activities or operations you do in the laboratory during the first day or even during the first week of work? Oh. Mm. Oh, can you clarify the question? Um, anong... like, like, what are the operations po, that you do in the laboratory during the uh, first week of your work? Po? Like when she started, the first time she started yes. working at the NTG. Yes, so, ma'am. Oh, okay. Yes, so, In the ma'am. first time, <laughs> what did you do? Kasi ah. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> ah, the, during my first week. Or, or baka, ay, Kathy, or baka yung schedule, like yung schedule, yung routine mo na work, like mm, in a work okay. week, pwede rin ganun na, what do you do given a week, ano yung usual na routine mo? Pwede siguro ganun din. Uh, depende po actually. So, uh, depende sa naka-schedule na activity. So right now, um, magtatanim pa ako ng tomato. Mag-regenerate ng tomato. So, na, usually, nagpapayability test muna ako sa lab. And then, it will take two weeks bago ita-transplant sa um, seeding trays. And... So, staggered yung pagpasok namin ng seeds sa lab for viability testing. So, example, 50 accessions today. So, two weeks from now, that 50 accessions will be transplanted. And then, the following day, um, maglalabas na naman kami ng seeds. So, by the way, pag maglalabas ng seeds, hindi kaagad-agad isoso. Kasi galing sila sa uh, malamig na storage facility. So, kailangan nila mag um, absorb pa ng moisture kasi masasok sila pag um, kaagad-agad nyo sino nilagay sa tubig, for example. Um, instead na mabubuhay yung seeds, masasok yung buto kasi kagaling nila sa cold storage, sa napakababang temperature. So, kailangan muna nila mag-absorb ng moisture. So, it will take um, more than two days before we could actually sow them sa lab. Or, example, pag direct sa soil. So, um, yun muna. Una, maglalabas ng seeds, and then uh, we will do the viability testing. And then, pag tumubo, nag-germinate, ililipat namin sa, example, pag solanaceous. Pag solanaceous kasi kailangan namin na ilipat sa seedling trays. And then, after three to four weeks, ililipat na namin sa field. So, ayun. Yun yung usually yung ginaga ko, routine. And, um, sa lab, nag experiment ako ng mga iba't ibang priming treatments, especially for older seeds. So, hindi sila agad-agad nag-germinate. So, 
sa so, nag hydro prime ako or I I use um, other priming agents like in O3 depende sa maisipan ko ay mga na research ko na mga priming experiments para lang tumubo yung mga older seeds so hindi lahat ng mga pinapasok sa lab for viability test nagsurminate unfortunately so na 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 Ay, gusto ko lang po na mag, ano, kumuha ng ideas po. And maybe if you or some of us in the future would be working on uh, gene banks. So, mm-hmm. yun po, may idea po kami na ganun pala yung routine nyo po. But during my first week sa gene bank, ang ginawa ko ay, actually, nilibot ko lang. Tinignan ko kung anong ginagawa nila. And then, Tinignan ko kung ano yung mga available data at kung anong meron, kung ano yung mga hahawakan ko, kung mga pinag-aralan ko. But honestly, up until now, naka four years na ako sa gin bank, mahigit. Um, actually, challenging pa rin yung ibang crops. Like what I've said earlier, you have to get to know your crop. And sa sobrang dami nila, meron pa rin crop na hindi mo kilala. So hanggang ngayon, inaaral ko pa rin sila. Especially, um, the indigenous crops natin. Medyo challenging sila kasi nga very limited din ang information na meron. So, yun. Continuous learning pa rin. Yeah. Thank you, Angelica. Thank you, Kathy. Yun yung sigurong uh, yun sigurong saan ka pwede makapasok. Actually, for those who are not who have no thesis problems yet, Maybe from from this conversation, no, you will have some ideas. As especially with the pandemic, you are allowed to actually do uh, simple studies or simple researches uh, because of your inaccessibility to the facilities in university. So instead of the large scale theses that are usually done by the majors of the department, uh, even simple studies like you know developing simple protocols. Uh, yung output nyo talagang direction na makakatulong. So, Miss uh, Kathy showed her email address earlier. Uh, if ever you may be interested, yun lang. O la lang. Pang, panghabal ko lang. Anybody? Ah, okay. Kevin, thank you, Angelica. Kat, uh, I'm still your still have fuel to go on, di ba, until five. No, just kidding. Sure po, okay lang po. Okay, enjoy naman ako. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you miss your teaching, your teaching, ano, your teaching time. Tsaka, you have, you're so rich with knowledge. Sayang yung knowledge na nandyan lang sa'yo. Okay, thank you. Um, Kevin, yes, Kevin. Uh, good uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first, I would like to thank uh, Ma'am Joy and Ma'am Kathy for this opportunity to learn about uh, PGR conservation and utilization, of course. Then, uh, for my question, uh, Earlier in class, in our class in PGR, uh, we have discussed about the Svalbard uh, as a uh, as a insurance for other gene banks around the world. That whenever there is uh, unfortunate happen, uh, circumstances that happen in their gene banks, they have insurance. Nga ilang butang sa Svalbard. So uh, may I know nga kung ang mga accessions ba sa NPGRL is na nakadeposit po sa Svalbard? Ma'am? Not all. There are um, a few accessions. I believe legumes and maize meron sa Svalbard. Pero, I think hindi umabot ng isang libong accessions yun. Kukunti lang. Kasi, um, may mga strict guidelines ang Svalbard na kailangan naming sundin. And, hindi din basta-basta ang magduplicate doon. So, actually, right now, gumagawa kami ng proposal um, which will be funded by um, Crop Trust, uh, Regeneration and Duplication sa Svalbard. Pero hindi lang naman kami nagduplicate sa Svalbard. We also have duplicates in Korea. So, personally, ako nag-handle ng duplication ng around 400 accessions of vegetable crops sa Korea. Um, medyo strict din ang Korea kasi dinecline nila yung aming maize collection. So, ito yung challenging sa maize, diba? Um, marami ng BT 
na varieties, uh, modern um, hybrid varieties na GM. And um, karam, lalo lalo na sa Mindanao kasi ang first thesis topic ko sana was about maize. Sa Mindanao kasi diba, we have sige-sige, yung recycled corn. Diba? And usually katabi nila mga GM corn or katabi rin yung mga side-by-side, side, mga traditional varieties. And we all know that open pollinated itong corn. So, usually yung mga nagko-collect, kala nila yung na-collect nila purong traditional variety. But because of transgene transfer, na kakaroon ng um, transfer ng BT gene, and yun yung na-detect sa Korea. So, kaya hindi tinanggap yung aming uh, maze collection doon. Kasi na-detect nila na meron palang um, GM na napasama. So, yun. Another clarification, ma'am. Uh, just to get your thought on, uh, we have men you have mentioned earlier that uh, we have different kinds of uh, conservation. We have home gene banks, community, national, and international. Uh, just to get your thought, kung uh, para sa mo ha ang uh, pinaka-importante sa ilaha? Actually, lahat. <laughs> Kasi nagsistort lahat sa home seed banks, or even if not really home seed bank, kasi yung ibang nagtatago ng buto, hindi naman nila tinatawag na home seed bank. Meron talaga tayo mga seed guardians, or even individuals na um, gusto magtago ng seeds. So, kaya kami nakakakolekta because nagtatago pa rin sila at nagtatanim. So, pag once nag-stop na silang magtago at magtanim, wala na rin kami makakolekta, unless nasa wild. So, very important din yung mga tinatawag natin seed guardians. And um, community gene banks are important as well. Pero ito yung medyo challenging na i-manage. Kasi nga, community. So, kailangan maging sustainable siya. And then, meron ding um, support na para i-guide sila na i-manage yung kanilang community gene banks. But there are um, some naman na, kumbaga, nakagawian na nila. Like, ang experience ko sa Ifugao, part na ng culture nila. So, karamihan ng ating mga indigenous peoples, actually, part na ng culture nila ang pagtatago ng buto. And um, the same with um, in Sarangani province, and I believe dyan din sa bukid nun, meron, meron mga seed gardens tayo. And minamanage nila yung kanilang community gene banks even without the support of the LGU, for example. Pero, may mga community gene banks talaga na led by um, the LGU, like the one in, I believe in Benguet, meron doon community gene bank na um, NGO and LGU partnership. So, yun, very um, important din yun. Kasi wala kami makokolekta eh kung wala sila. And, of course, kumaga ano siya, um, kumaga sa factory, um, connected silang lahat. Kung wala yung isa, uh, malamang hindi din mag uh, wala din yung iba Ganun. just uh, last, my last clarification ma'am uh, given that the Philippines is considered as one of the mega diverse country so unsa pakadako ang uh, gap between uh, conservation na ginabuhat sa NPGRL o sa anang available nga resources pa nga kinahanglan i-conserve kinahanglan i-utilize o i-manage then kanang just to give my kanang idea nga or thought nga, nga kaning PGR is a collective effort of all the sectors in the society tungod kay uh, kitang tanan maapektuhan and all our actions are considered important labi na sa mga scientists uh, especially uh, mga kuan pod mga policy makers and the kanang community people ma'am so maro to ang akong pangutan ng clarification actually um Marami pang kailangan puntahan ng mga areas. Um, like, maraming mga example areas na may mga conflicts. Um, like, Muslim areas. Hindi kami basta-basta nakakapasok. And I believe, even ang mga kapatid natin Muslims, madami din silang kanilang sariling varieties na hindi namin ma-access kasi nga um, due to security, mahirap. Mm -hmm. And 
also yun nga yung mga um, areas ng mga IPs. So, sila pa naman yung madaming tinatago. Sila pa yung mahirap i-access. So, I believe marami pang dapat puntahan ang mga um, researchers ng GenBank. Pero limited lang talaga because of so many factors. Thank you, Cassie. Thank you, Kevin. Um, I think, uh, ah, wonderful questions from, from all of you guys and comments. Na I comment si AJ on the chat box, hoping there will be lawmakers or policymakers who will pass the National Plant Genetic Resources Conservation and Management and Utilization Bill. Meron mag ganun, Kathy? Wala po. <laughs> Pero, nga ba yung dapat ikatok? Kumbaga sa kanila, kailangan lang talaga um, i-laymanize. Mahirap kasi ipaintindi. It's actually a challenge talaga po. Um, we're trying to um, create, actually, parang i-concept note lang. Um, dati nagpa-plan ako before pandemic, um, mm-hmm. ibigay kay Pacquiao. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, um, yun nga, dumating yung pandemic and all. So, hindi na namin na uh, asikaso. So, yun yung Sana. plano talaga namin na ikatok siya sa policy makers. Pero meron lang mga officials din sa UPLB kasi na ayon nila na ilabas from the university ang GenBank or you know, access the help of politicians kasi mapapoliticize mm-hmm. ang GenBank. So. Yeah, well, yeah, well, it depends whether which is which you would lose the accessions or you just of course you need we need politics we need it's a political issue it's a political issue pgr conservation is a political issue the philippines had signed international treaties so i think pgr is a political issue so i don't think about i'm not sure if i agree with a comment of your of the whatever <laughs> the people at New the top the top press. But anyway, thank you. And dami natin pag-uusapan. We need you and I and Florence need to have a chat. Um, okay, sige. Thank you. Sino pa? May tanong pa ang iba? Um, sige. May pahabol lang si Giovanni. So his internet access was really cut off. And well, he was actually sa Classicat because you're talking about uh, Seed Guardians and um yung yung all the series of uh, efforts for gene banking what i've been emphasizing remember i said uh, earlier at the start of the of this um online meet na i can only you know put in as much i'll have to choose which are the most important things so i've been emphasizing on them uh ctu of course it's the it's not yet a very formal principle for conservation but well since 1998 we have been talking about CTU, diba? conservation through use. And I've been emphasizing that each one of them actually should be part of the conservation, even if they just do CTU. So um, Giovanni has a question like, um, do you have efforts on promoting you no know, the use, the utilization? Because CTU is one very simple principle of conservation. Sabi mo kanina, whatever farmers and people continue to grow them in their home gardens or whatever spaces they have, then they, technically they conserve. But if they don't want them anymore, then they could be gone. Exactly. But uh, if they're not aware that every effort of growing crops and using them is, is you know, a simple contribution to the national goal of PGR conservation, then exactly. So, meron ba daw yung ginagawa in order to promote CTU? Actually, um, we're just starting. Kasi, um, paano ko ba sasabihin ito na medyo? <laughs> um, personally, kasi ako, ako, um, may background ako sa community. Kumbaga, kaya, kaya nga ako kumuha ng PGR. Dapat kasi MS Genetics ang kukunin ko for MS. But dahil nag-work ako sa community, mas na-appreciate ko yung PGR. And so, kaya yun yung kinuha ko. Pero unfortunately, sa institution kasi namin, medyo, um, kumbaga gusto nila, hindi naman hard science, pero, um, paano ba to? Karamihan kasi ng scientist, medyo hindi in touch sa gra- grassroots. That's a fact. I 
Ma'am Joy, agree po ba kayo? <laughs> not, <laughs> not me. Not me, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hindi ko alam ko paano ko siya explain. But um, right now, personally, I'm uh, starting to do it. Kaya nga ako nag-volunteer to manage our page sa Facebook. Kasi parang feeling ko, it's one big effort na rin para i-promote ang PGR. Kasi karamihan na ngayon, di ba, online. So, kahit very simple lang na information drive through mm-hmm. Facebook na kayang gawin. So, ginagawa ko siya. So, nagsisimula pa lang ako. And then, also sa communities. Every time meron akong opportunity na mag work. So, that's the time talaga nagsishare ako sa communities. So, sa kanila kasi, sa some of my colleagues, nagde-depend sa mga pamphlets, ganun. So, for me kasi, nadyo hindi siya ganun ka-effective. <laughs> so, so those, I, were, those were effective before. Those were yeah. very effective before. But, you know, your approach, approaches should should also, you know, um, sort of <laughs> adapt. But I understand. Ako, uh, Kasi din yung mga um, iba, mm-hmm. ibang researchers and scientists to mag-laymanize. Kung mag communicate yung science sa grassroots, sa community, medyo hirap, karamihan. So, yun yung challenge actually po. So, hindi lang sa GenBank, kundi sa... Uh, sa aming institution. <laughs> Masa hirap pagdating sa ganun. Yeah, thank you, Kathy. But, you sabi nga, um, well, you're still young. And <laughs> if you can, you know, if you can root a little bit deeper there, then and, and I believe ang dami mo pang magagawa. Mm-hmm. But you need also a nourishing and very supportive environment in order to to flourish. <laughs> to flourish. But we'll talk about that next time. Ang ano ko lang is... Um, Maraming nakakaintindi actually about the importance kasi we've been talking about it in national conferences and in, in, in international conferences about the need to bridge hardcore sciences with social sciences, which means that the need to really go down. So the critique for, for hardcore scientists would be you're just occupied, you're just satisfied with staying in your ivory towers and you don't want to go down. So that had been the critique I've heard for many years already. So I think many of many of the people senior scientists and all are actually aware but they're just they're not ready for the hard work because <laughs> humanizing work lemonizing hardcore science simplifying things and and changing mindsets um, those are difficult tasks and actually but anyway that's another issue people young people these are the issues at least you're you're, you're through this conversation <laughs> you're made aware that um uh, when you graduate, you know, you have many good goals in life and many good intentions in life, but some workplaces may not be as nourishing, but whenever you believe in, in the kind of work that you do, you have to, you know, keep on and find ways. So that's one of the challenges, concerns that you may encounter. It's not about work, but maybe it's about some of the people you work with. So, kaya kayo tinitrain in problem solving while you are still students because problem solving is a very important skill. It is not just really... But anyway, ang dami ko, ang dami ko inadaldal pag magsisimula ako. <laughs> so, I'll just... Ano. So, if ever may tatanong pa, I will just... Um, we can let go of Kathy maybe 15 minutes from now or 10 minutes from now. But I just have a few questions and maybe a few comments, Kathy. And then, of course, we'll have John Michael later, John, for for the closing remarks. Okay. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. This is not, this is not a formal. This is not a formal. Uh, pro. There's no formal program. Pa ano lang talaga siya. It's good for you to meet people. Actually, um, it's good for you to meet people and to be aware. Kasi pag sabi ko nga, pag ako lang magdadaldal palagi, um, yeah, well, I can be v- very boring sometimes. But it's it's good for you to to see a face, especially ano, somebody who is very passionate about PGR conservation, but is also very honest enough to present to you the challenges. But those are challenges that will, could also be turned into opportunities. And probably you can think that maybe in the future you could come in. And if you have ideas, you could contribute things like that. I don't know. 
So, kaya sinasabi natin, we need more p- young people like you. Natawa lang ako, Kat, kasi comment ko, ah, mas na-invite kita to pursue MSPGR kasi kay Florence na to pursue <laughs> MS Genetics. <laughs> no, we have a common friend who's also a professor sa MSU Jensen, so Florence. Through Florence, I met Kathy, and since then, uh, it had been a very uh, good uh, friendship. So, yun. Ang, ang ano ko lang, Kat, is... Uh, hmm, wait lang ha. Uh, you you mentioned something about bit bit ang data. Now some of these students here are doing their research, <laughs> are doing their thesis study. And ang isang struggles mo is bit bit ang data. Wala kang mahanap na data kasi bit bit ang data. I'm just curious. Wala ba kayong policies? Because I remember when I was a student sa US. Uh, Oh, of course, ako din hinanapan mo ko ng data, di ba? Kasi walang data. <laughs> But then, the good thing is that I can give you the data sa, sa mong bill. <laughs> nandun sa, ano, nandun sa appendix ng aking thesis, di ba? Pero I remember, I remember kasi, di ba, my, my advisor, my supervisor sa, sa PhD ko is a gene bank curator din. So, a junk professor siya ng, ng Illinois. But he was the national gene bank curator for soybean. So, parang polish na sila doon. And one of the things that I remember is that um, I have to use the official record books of, of the National Soybean Research Center, NP, N, NSRC. Hala? National Soybean. Tama, NSRC. And then, there's a first page ng record book. Nandun yung policies and guidelines. And naka-indicate doon na uh, I leave this record book. It, when I'm done as a thesis student, because a thesis student ako, or PhD student, um, the data, may co-ownership sila sa data. So the data, I still could, I still have, I own my data technically because I have them in electronic form, but all the data that I have should also be recorded in, in the record, official record book, and I leave that behind. So that's one. Uh, aside from the fact that, of course, you have to uh, back up online and physical data. Sa kanila kasi mostly physical data na eh. Oh, sorry, online data na. But still, most students usually, di ba, talagang meron tayong record book. Oo, palagi. So, I, li- I leave that behind. I leave all my record record notebooks behind, the official ones. So, sana ganun din. Like, meron ba kayong ganun? Tapos sinasign na, <laughs> nagsasign kayo na ganito so, ganito. Wala po. And usually yung nagbibit-bit. Ayaw kong mag-sugarcoat. Sabi ko, hala baka kung ano-ano na sinasabi ko. Hindi ako nag-sugarcoat. Bit-bit mismo na researcher. So, <laughs> ayun. Oh, because there's a little bit of sort of thinking na may ownership. Alam ko yan. Pero if to address the concern, kasi ang daming concerns. But that's it, no? Um, your short staff there, naintindi ko na konting budget. Ganyan. But little things could be, but if you encountered that four years ago, at least there should be something should have been done a little bit. If if the work environment is very open to suggestions, things like that. But anyway. Ano na po kasi sa system, although right now po kasi, I'm working on the quality management system sa GenBank. And um, honestly, maraming resistance. <laughs> Dun sa, you know, standardized protocol, quality management, may mga resistance talaga. So, medyo hirap pa rin po talaga. Especially if the ideas are coming from a younger yeah. researcher. So, ayun po. Ah, yeah, <laughs> I understand that. When I was younger, even now, I'm still in the middle group. Uh, meron, wherever you go, Kathy, there would always okay. be. Opo. clash of ideas but hopefully we remember uh, the goal the goals um, but, but keep on keep on my dear so kasi napag-uusapan namin yung um, they're, 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 they're familiar now with the NCB uh, oh, sorry mali the, the gris of, of US so natu- nakakatuwa na hopefully uh, maybe next year early next year ma launch niyo na yung yung Phil Grace that would be uh-huh. very good uh uh so that, that's that's a good job you're doing a good job um <laughs> again the problem po is funding for it 
<laughs> to go online. Pero na-access naman po namin siya internally. And mm-hmm. if may gustong maka-access no, kailangan lang pumunta sa office. <laughs> Ayun. So. Yeah. Um, so in reality, for the students, uh, daming, pwede maraming magandang-gandang ideas, pero very limited. But, you know, that's why I remember SDG 17 as, you know, the final but very essential goal you know, for to sustain development but SDG sustainable development goals so you know that you have limitations of workplace you have limitations so you can find maybe solutions to those limitations funding or otherwise equipment or otherwise facilities or otherwise with partnership and um kaya lang pag ang dami mong iniisip hindi mo na maiisip lahat diba kati i understand that or naiisip mo lahat pero you are Oh my God, at the end of the day, no, it's just draining. To think. So celebrate celebrate your successes, small successes. Kailangan lang and, po din talagang maging creative. Example, wala kang petri dishes. So ang ginagawa ko, wala kang petri dish. Yung mga plastic na nabibili dyan sa... Yun yung ginagamit ko for germination. I mean, those little things lang to be creative and... Para lang magawa yung work. So, kailangan po talaga ganun always. And right. <laughs> hindi pwede lang na, kumbaga, porket wala kang resources, you will stop doing your job. Of course, hindi po pwede yun. And yun nga, I guess, gawa din siguro medyo bata pa. Passionate. Nandyan pa talaga yung passionate for PGR conservation. And talagang nakakahinayang na daming nasayang na mga... Variety successions na ang hirap na. I mean, I don't know if there still can be found in the mm-hmm. wild or in the home gardens or baka tuluyan na silang nawala. So, as much as possible, kailangan silang isave. So, kahit na mahirap na gawin yung trabaho, kailangan pa rin push. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. Oh, with collaboration, uh, little by little, sana ma-address. Especially <laughs> yung mga may pera. Because I was wondering, uh, so if this would be my final uh, comment or sharing na lang siguro before John, before John Michael's turn. Um, kasi there are existing programs eh, like uh, every local barangay, every barangay at the barangay level, may, may program sila about bulayan. Yes. And if if Jovan is here, no, if Jovan is here, he would have commented more, I think, because we had to do, we have to be very creative with the learning activities of the students during the pandemic. So we have to rewrite everything and rethink everything. And yun ngang yun yung isa sa mga ini ah gisud kan nagisud na ko tagalog gutom na actually I'm, I'm, so, I'm so hungry na <laughs> sorry gutom na gutom na ako um. Um, one of the ways is partnership talaga. Kasi every local barangay, tapos pareho lang palagi yung ginugrow nila. O, oh, karatalong, uh, whatever. <laughs> but we were sort of successful, Kathy, in you know educating a little bit about PGR and indigenous vegetables and NUS, you know, the LGU, the Logon, where CMU is based. And then their, their chair on the Committee on Agriculture is kind of active. We also have an advantage. We also have an edge because he's the husband of a uh, faculty in the Department of Horticulture, and then you know he's very open and he's very excited. Yung little little by little talaga, and then he was they were able to convert their vacant parking lot ng LGU into a gulayan and a wider gulayan. Kasi pag ang mga barangay health officers or yung I don't know yung involved na ladies sa nutrition program ng Barangays, they're only growing just the usual that they can grow, but if you, they can be edu- re-educated and retooled, so must magiging aware. So simple things, but I know it's too much because doing legwork and networking is very challenging, but little by little. We actually started that with the project on the documentation of indigenous vegetables. So, nag-start na po kami sa promotion ng mga indigenous vegetables kasi ang ginagawa namin Yung mga data na nakukuha namin sa ibang provinces, example, ini-introduce namin sa ibang provinces. Like, example, meron kaming na-document na gulay sa Ilocos, tapos hindi ginugulay sa Mindanao. So, ina-educate namin na 
mga kain niya na school. Like, you can cultivate that, can have that as additional source of food. So, mm. we're, we actually started with that. Pero, yun nga, as of now, medyo limited na ulit. But, um, little by little, yun nga po, kailangan po siyang ipagpatuloy. Kailangan um, maging consistent yung efforts, always. Right, right. Kayaan mo, it means na um, maraming new exciting things to do in the future. Yun, little things. Kasi sometimes if you aim too high, I can speak by experience. You get burned out. And I'm burning out yes. right now. Parang ako. <laughs> Oo, sige. But anyway, <laughs> thank you. Uh, we'll, we'll resume our chat next time. We'll find time to chat again. <laughs> Uh, personally, I'm very grateful for your time, Kathy. And John, now it's your time. Kathy, I did not prepare any official certificate, but if you want it's one, okay. I will prepare one for you. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> okay. okay, I'll have John, Michael, and then uh, go ahead, John. <laughs> Final agenda, <agility>, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> so, in behalf of the class, um, we would like to extend our warmest and sincere Thanks to our mom, Joy, for the wonderful opportunity given. And of course, to Ma'am Catherine for the very informative and comprehensive lecture and for sparing your time nourishing us future plant leaders and future protectors of diversity. It had really deepened an, our understanding uh, of the essentiality and the cruciality of future conservation utilization and management, and as well, it had made us more appreciative of the variation of the wealth in our surroundings. And this lesson that we have gained and we have digested this afternoon will surely make us competitive, um, competent, and of course, responsible plant breeders. Indeed, that PGR conservation, utilization, and management is very essential as it will not only help sustain crop improvement, it generally gives people, the nation, and the world resiliency to whatever constraint um, we face in the future. And given the challenges in the process, as a plant leader, it is not only our job to only improve crops, but also to improve the methods, the processes in PGR conservation, utilization, and management. We salute you, Ma'am Catherine, for being selfless, for having the heart to aid in um, helping secure food for all the Filipinos and all the people around the world. Um, we thank you and our gratitude has no bounds. So thank you so much, Ma'am. Thank you so much, then, for giving me this opportunity. Sobrang na-miss kong magturo. <laughs> Ganon. Thank you, John. Well appreciated. I, I really appreciate Welcome, it. Ma'am. Thank you very much. So, Kathy, kung na-miss mo magturo, gusto mo mag-guest lecture all the time. <laughs> Bigla mo na ako na topic pa. Medyo sabi ko, ano pong scope ng aking sasabihin? Pwede mo akong bigyan ng topic, ma'am. <laughs> Actually, your name is listed actually as potential guest lecturer sa MS Bidding Program namin when we revised it. But definitely, thank you so much. Um, wala kaming maisasweldo. But um, more than anything else, it's the sincere appreciation. And, um, you know, I believe in these young people. Kaya minsan ginadukduk ko gina sila. I believe in them so much. Uh, kaya ano, if you care so much, kaya sometimes you get hurt a lot, but you still you still go on and because yeah, well, well I, we need to really sustain you know the passing on of the torch, sustaining the fire. But more than anything, I believe in you know the essential enrichment, the resource, the the knowledge resource, but also the heart resource. Kailangan kasi balance yung engagement of the mind and the heart. Walay pulos ang, ang, ang overflow because there's an overflow of knowledge and information available. But it's about um, how to cultivate that desire and passion to contribute as young people. Kasi it's their future. It, we're not talking, I mean, we're enjoying the world right now, right? We're experiencing the, but it's your future that you will also be investing on. Yes. Uh, you have a long way to go, young people. And when you graduate, it's your it's gonna be your turn and it's good to be invested in both mind and heart yeah. so 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> so thank you everybody and I'm well I can only say thank you. Wala na akong maiba. Wala na akong ibang masabi but really really sincerely thank you to everybody who asked questions, who clarified um to our closing remarks speaker Michael. Wonderful words from you Michael. On such a very short notice. Thank you. And to everybody who are quiet but I know that you're paying attention. I'm hoping that what Kathy had shared today is a seed that is, you know, right now germinating in your heart and hopefully would grow. Okay? So, thank you and have a good, wonderful uh, day. And for the rest of the day, uh, stay safe, uh, stay healthy, mentally, physically, emotionally. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Kat. You look very, very wonderful today also. <laughs> <laughs> oh, siya, mga estudyante, yan. Salamat sa lahat and I'll see you next week or I will update you with some message on the Google Classroom. Okay? And this video will be made available as soon as possible. Bye-bye. Thank you. Excuse Thank me, you, Doc. Wala ba pa yung photo op? Ay, oo nga pala. I was doing photo-photo kanina but sige, palabas ang mukha. <laughs> Sorry. Malis na si Kathy. Um, malis na si Kathy. See, I'm so hungry actually. I'm, I I missed my lunch. Sorry. Uh, sige, tayo lang. One, two, three. Asa na? Asa na? Sige. Okay. Thank you for those who stayed. Okay. And then, kinsa tong excuse pa? Na ay... Kung unsay reason, katong photo op inyong gusto, kaya nag-excuse. Sorry, hindi na ako makapag-isip masyado because really, really. Sige, isa pa ang photo op. Kay Murag, nalipay kayo sa inyo karunga po na. No, actually, um, no, no, no. This is one of the things, I will cut this off from the video ha. Ang uh, i-upload na ako. But, um, he heard it from another young person. Kathy is much, much younger than me, but yeah, you can see the passionate her her passionate and a commitment to do PGR, and I'm I'm just very glad that you know John was able to connect that to us. You you said very wonderful words today, John, and I'm very very happy. And then I'm um yeah, nakakatuwa, nakakatuwa. And for those who raised questions and who clarified, it's very very uh nourishing, no nourishing. So. Maraming salamat sa lahat. Last smile so that I can take a photo of. Okay. All right. Uy, D, sir. Bagong gupit. Thank you, everybody. I'll see you next week. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. God bless all. God bless you all.